Hello, everyone. Welcome to Michigan State University Student Life Series. My name is Nancy Kobos, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Michigan State University. Today, we will be highlighting the Residence Education and Housing Services Office. Before we jump into the program, I would like to direct your attention to the right hand of your screen where you will find a chat function. Please use the chat to ask any questions that you may have during today's presentation. Without further ado, I'd like to present Becky Brewer, who is the Assistant Director of Outreach in the Housing Office. Becky, take it away. Thanks so much, Nancy. Thanks everybody for being here tonight if you're watching the live recording. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, good afternoon, good morning. Um, if you're in a different time zone, we're so thrilled to have you with us. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about living on campus. You know, MSU, so much of learning happens outside the classroom, whether that's study spaces or internships or student clubs that you might be involved in, the friends that you make, the networking that you do. And so I'm happy to share with you a little bit about what that's like as a Spartan on campus. As Nancy mentioned, I'm Becky Brewer, the Assistant Director for Outreach, representing Housing and Dining today. And a little bit about Michigan State, we are one of the largest campuses um, in, the, in the world, honestly. And we don't apologize for that, we celebrate that. Big means big opportunity. Um, but also, you don't wanna like date a city, you don't wanna um, be in such a big space. It can feel very impersonal. And so we divide campus into five key neighborhoods. And so you can see a little bit about our campus there. Each neighborhood has the same amenities. It has the same services available, but each neighborhood has a little bit of a different architecture, a little bit different vibe, and also its proximity to key um, programs or um, landmarks on campus might be a little different. So of course they differ in geography. But again, all the services and amenities are similar throughout all of our neighborhoods. So we're gonna talk a little bit about living on campus today. And we have tons of support available for students. At MSU, we have so many students with special personal situations that we really do try to do special every day. So um, in residence education and in culinary services, we really work to meet each student's individual needs. So we'll, we'll talk about those, um, those different services today. Uh, and again, as Nancy said, if you're tuning in during our live show, if you wanna put some questions into the chat or we'll share our contact information at the end of the session if you have individual questions and you're watching the recording after. So at MSU, uh, a big part of it is the roommate experience. And so we do assist um, in roommate uh, matching if you're looking for someone to live with or you can pull in a roommate, someone that you might know already or you might meet during the admissions or orientation process. So if you do pull in a roommate, you would already know who that person is. But if you ask the university to match you with someone, you would receive notification of that around mid-July to allow you to connect during move-in and figure out who's gonna bring the TV, who's gonna bring the futon, also to start relationship building before you live together. We also have resident assistants. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but they help with roommate um, transition and roommate relationship building and community building. Students uh, who wish to make a roommate change after assignments are complete, we ask that students um, not change their room until two weeks after move-in. And so students can work with their community director right in the hall for more information on room changes after move-in. So folks ask what's included. We have service centers in each hall that manage mail and packages. The nice thing at Michigan State is those come right to the halls, our 27 residence halls and apartments. They, uh, there's no like central mail depot that folks need to go to. Um, so mail and packages come uh, right to your hall. They also check out key things like vacuums, brooms, um, if you need a temporary access card or you have any problems at all with um, those items, that you can go right to the service center and get some assistance with that. We also include a linen package that can be exchanged weekly at your hall service desk, and that's included in um, the living experience at Michigan State. We also include Wi-Fi um, in all of the student rooms and in the public areas within the residence halls. All digital, um, excuse me, all student rooms are digital cable ready, and there's more information on the screen if you'd like to see a little bit more about the cable television options available to you in the residence halls. Lots of families have questions about what to bring. Some basic high level information I can share with you is microwaves, mini fridges, standard size futon and fans are allowed. 
items that we don't allow include indoor grills, halogen lamps, candles, pets, except for fish and service animals, space heaters, and personal air conditioners. Essentially anything that's like a fire hazard or a safety hazard. Um, and we'll bring, we'll give you a lot more information as you move towards move in. More detailed lists are available on our website. Those are just some key items to note as you're thinking about what life at Michigan State might be like. The most important thing I think to talk about is what assistance is available for students within the halls. So uh, because we are so large, we just provide a ton of different support for students. So let's let's dive into what the on-site staff members might look like. We have intercultural aides, which are undergraduates who live in the neighborhood to assist students with the realities of living with folks that they're not related to. Most people have lived with their families their whole life. And so navigating the challenges of living in community with other folks, uh, resident assistance and intercultural aides are really the first line within the halls to help um, support that community building. Assistant community directors, our graduate level staff who live in the hall um, and work with uh, the residents' assistants to supervise them. The community director is a full-time master's prepared professional that lives in the building um, and supervises all the rest of the live-in staff. And then an assistant director is a full-time staff member who lives off campus, but is there's one generally per neighborhood. And then in uh, Hubbers and Acre, Acres Hall specifically, we have resident directors as well. So there's a lot of layers of support. Typically the RA is going to be the, the individual, the student that your, uh, your student or you would work with the most for any questions that you have or any help that you might need within the hall during your time with us. In addition, for first year students, we have the Spartan Compass program. And this is a new program with um, additional help basically for folks coming to college. We know that um, even if your family has gone to college before, you really learn how to do college by going to college and it takes some time to transition. And so we really have stepped up our support in Acres and Hubbard Hall, which are where predominantly first year, or first year halls and we wanted to give additional support, additional staff, additional events to really help people understand what their resources are, to make friends, and just have a really successful year. So we've added some extra staff, some extra events around the Spartan Compass program to help students with the transition to college. A lot of folks ask, um, you know, what can you tell me about on-campus safety? Obviously we're concerned with physical safety, but also the psychological safety of our students. So in collaboration with the MSU Police Department, which is not like a security department, they're a fully functional police department. They're one of the largest police programs in the state of Michigan. Um, they're fully sworn officers. I think we have between 80 and 90 full-time officers at present to help us with safety on campus. Um, within the halls, we also have um, the residential halls are locked. The living wings are locked 24 seven and a valid MSU ID card is uh, required to access them. All guests have to be escorted by a resident while they're on site. And we have emergency green phones. There's a photo on screen if you'd like to see what that looks like in a residential wing. But most rooms have sight lines to so the green phone right on the floor. And they act as a two-way 911, essentially. So if a person presses the button, they're immediately connected with um, dispatch. Or MSU police can actually broadcast an emergency message or a shelter in place or something like that if needed. So those green phones are uh, again available in every living wing um, and within sight line from um, the residence hall doors. The rooms themselves have peepholes, fire rated doors, fire suppression systems, smoke detectors. So again, you know, we take safety incredibly seriously and all of those things are in place for you at Michigan State. We also have a campaign called Hate Has No Home Here. We want to make sure that all students feel included and so um, in residence education, we are committed to providing a safe, diverse, inclusive, and socially just environment, living environment for all of our students. So uh, we wanna make sure again, that everyone feels that they have a home at Michigan State. So being new to MSU, you may have heard that our slogan is go green and the appropriate response to that is go white. Um, so if I'm wearing my Michigan State stuff anywhere um, in the world, I've been in airports abroad and folks have seen my Michigan State gear and yelled, go green, and I yell, go white. 
but it's more than a slogan. It's more than our sports teams. It's more than school spirit. At MSU, being smart and green is like a way of thinking and a way of living. So we are uh, in the top 19 schools in the Princeton Review for our sustainability efforts. And um, being smart and green, again, is a way of life. So we offer extensive recycling programs throughout campus, including the residence halls. We have a program called Pack Up Pitch In at the end of the year when folks are moving out. So if you have extra stuff that you don't want to take with you, we are able to recycle those items or to provide them with community partners for folks who may have need of small household appliances or furniture or rugs or things of that nature. So we're able to rehome those items and divert them from landfills. And we have tons of partnerships with local, regional, and student organic farmers. We also have um, all the food waste from the, the, the dining halls goes to an anaerobic digester that produces um, other forms of energy. We have a giant recycling and surplus center. So a lot of students actually are very interested in the green economy and jobs in the green economy. And so sustainability is a core value to them. At Michigan State, we have so many opportunities to learn about sustainability, to practice it through internships or jobs. Um, and we have a residential community in the study of the environment. So if you're interested in sustainability, certainly we'd love to chat more with you about that. But MSU is a leader um, in being smart and green. Last year, we also brought online a new water treatment facility, which is very exciting. It's like our new Big Ben. You can see it from all over campus. And it really has um, assisted in water pressure, water quality. I mean, our water has always been very good and comes from a number of aquifers in the local agricultural area. Of course, Michigan State is in the middle of the Great Lakes region, the highest concentration of fresh water in the world. But we're very excited for this new um, water tower which just makes it that much better on campus. So in thinking about living on campus, uh, you may be coming from a state where there might be lotteries, there might be limited housing. That's not true in East Lansing. MSU guarantees housing for four years for students who may be coming from out of state. There's plenty of housing in the area for folks who uh, would like to make a home in East Lansing. So, but what we know is students who live on campus have a higher GPA than those who don't and are more likely to graduate on time. A higher GPA speaks for itself, that's pretty clear, but graduating on time really is about money. You know, paying for four years of school versus five years of school and starting your career earlier and earning that college prepared talent income is a really important piece in your planning. And so thinking about planning out your four years at Michigan State and you can graduate in four years if you're coming from a school with impacted enrollment, like in California or something like that. You can graduate from Michigan State in four years. And so thinking about planning that out, we um, encourage students to live on campus for at least two years in order to maximize, again, the likelihood of a higher GPA and graduating on time. So if you're like me and you're a foodie, thinking about campus dining, you may have in movies or maybe in the past heard stories about what residential dining was like. At Michigan State, we have award-winning residential dining. Um, we have vegetarian offers, offerings, comfort food, um, plant-focused menus, sustainable like local items. Um, the chefs really do an amazing job. So again, um, I wish we could host you on campus soon so that you could try the amazing food that's available to folks. But um, I'll do my best to describe the options for you today. So we have three unlimited meal plan options. This is really in line with our identity as a land grant institution that's really here for the people. Um, we don't do like swipes um, in packages because what we found is essentially we created some food scarcity for folks at the end of the semester. And so an unlimited dining option just is that is that it's uh, unlimited dining daily throughout um, throughout the semester. And so we also on top of the residential dining, we also offer retail and coffee shops that are attached to um, our meal plans, as well as community kitchens where people can cook together and build community together. Um, we have a super diverse menu and we also offer to go options, of course, in the land of COVID. We were able to bring online mobile ordering this year, as well as just tons of grab and go options, which are really, really exciting. So um, again, I hope to host you sometime soon to experience for yourself MSU dining. We have executive chefs and registered dietitians that's included in your meal plan. 
Again, our um, executive chefs receive a, a ton of training. In the middle picture there, Chef Kiri, she's my friend. She is um, an amazingly talented vegan chef. Um, our chefs really care about students and they really want to help provide the fuel that you need to have an extraordinary Spartan experience. So our dietitians, again, Gina and Kelsey, their photos are there. They um, help students who have special dietary needs and work directly with families. We have um, all sorts of special needs, whether it's religious based, whether it's medically based, whether it's preference based, whether you're a high performing athlete and you need a particular um, set of fuel in order to fuel those aspirations. We work with every student to make sure that they have what they need. Um, to that end, we recently launched, I think two years ago now, uh, a new venue called Thrive. And you can see the, the picture of it there on the left of your screen. But it is a venue that is completely certified free of the big eight allergens, plus it's gluten and sesame conscious. So if you have multiple allergies or you don't, you want to eat without thinking, eat without reading the, the labels, you can go there and you can have um, a, a lot of safety and security in the things that you're eating. We have allergen friendly dining in all of our residential dining um, system. But this way, you just know you go in the door knowing that it's certified free of the top eight allergens plus gluten and sesame. So I think that um, it's a really exciting thing. Students have cried in gratitude and relief when we've told them that this is an option um, and they just don't even have to think about worrying, will I potentially be harmed or need to go to the hospital today instead of taking the test? Um, and so the mental load that that takes off them is just really, really nice. I like going there. I don't have any allergens, but my mom is um, gluten-free and my daughter's friends have peanut allergies. So we can all go as a group and um, sit down and enjoy a meal and nobody really has to think about um, feeling excluded from any of the menu items because they're all um, safe for everyone. So these are some of the details about our dining plan. Again, they're all unlimited and they're very similar. The only difference is in the Spartan Cash and the number of guest passes. And you can add Spartan Cash at any time. You can purchase guest passes at any time, but some families like to purchase those things up front as part of a package. So again, um, you'll select your dining plan option when you sign your housing contract and they're labeled silver, gold, or platinum. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our office and we will, um, we will be able to take you through those details on an individual basis. Uh, so I wanna talk a little bit about being involved on campus. Um, I have the opportunity of working with a lot of Spartan leaders and there's just so many opportunities to get involved. We've got clubs, over 900 registered student organizations. We've got leadership opportunities. We've got uh, governmental opportunities. We've got lots of volunteer opportunities for our Center for Service Learning and Civic Engagement. We've got internships through career services. We've got so many ways for folks to get involved. But the base of it is you know, living on campus, having a safe place to, to stay, having um, good quality food, having those essentials taken care of so that you can do extraordinary things as Spartan. So if you would like to learn a little bit more, we have a group called the University Activities Board, which plans large and small events for students to meet other students and to get involved. We have the Residence Hall Association, which is like a student government within the halls, other ways to get involved. And we'd love to chat with you more. Once you move in, usually the Tuesday before classes start, there's a giant involvement event called Spartication. And it's a way for you to learn how to get involved as a Spartan. And all the different student orgs have, um, have booths and tents. Um, usually there's um, great live music. Um, it's basically a big party with delicious food. Um, and the basketball team usually comes out with Coach Izzo. And it's really just a really festive event to kick off the school year and to learn how to get involved. I see students walking away with amazing t-shirts and like house plants and um, there's a climbing wall, the fencing team. I remember one year climbed the climbing wall and fenced with Sparty up the climbing wall. So um, rest assured, there's a lot of ways to find community and find connection on campus at Michigan State. Um, and we have tons of events and staff to help you get there. So I appreciate everybody um, taking a moment to listen to what it's like to live on campus and to be a Spartan at Michigan State. If you have any questions, uh, Housing and Dining would love to chat with you further. 
We partner with the admissions office all the time, and you'll have an opportunity to be invited to admitted student events. Um, we'll be at orientation. We'll be communicating with you through move-in and through the student sign-up uh, period, the housing sign-up period. But if you would like to reach out, uh, we've included our contact information here on the last slide, as well as I encourage you to follow us on social. Insta is my favorite, but of course we have Facebook and, and other platforms as well, and we like engaging with students and parents around our social platforms. So again, thanks so much uh, for tuning in today, and we hope to talk to you soon.